Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Taylor Talks Tales. Today I'm going to be doing the 10 year challenge book tag edition. This was created by Rincey Reads over at Rincey Reads. I'll link the original video down below, but I thought this tag would be pretty fun. Um, it's a variation off of the 10 year challenge where you've got your 2009 photo and your 2019 photo. Um, and I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. So let's get started. All right, first question. What was your favorite book in 2009? So there's a couple contenders for this. Um, I was still in high school back in 2009. I was, it was my junior going into my senior year. Um, and at the beginning of junior year, we had these, or uh, sorry, beginning of spring semester junior year, we had these book circles where one of my favorite teachers ever, Mr. Rosenzweig, who is a subscriber to this channel, so shout out to him for introducing me to this amazing book. And that is The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell, and its sequel, Children of God. Now, The Sparrow, I think, is a stronger book, but Children of God completes the story. It was so amazing, phenomenal, it makes you question everything. Um, it's science fiction, but also very literary, and it was just an amazing book. I fell in love with it. Um, I remember I had to rush out and go buy my own copy and then read this sequel or, you know, kind of companion novel. It was amazing. I loved this so much my junior and senior year of high school. So 2009, this was definitely my, probably my favorite book. Um, but I did also enjoy, um, The Stand and Needful Things. I had read these well before 2009, but there's a period of time where I was rereading these a lot because these were, at the time, my two favorite Stephen King books. Because I actually didn't read It or Pet Cemetery until college. Even though I'd read tons of Stephen King when I was in middle school and high school, those were the two that I do enjoy a lot, but those were, those were college reads. Alright, question number two. What is your favorite book in 2019 or of 2019? So I would definitely say, if I had to pick a few, so for books that came out in 2019, I would definitely say 10,000 Doors um, of January by Alex Harrow, uh, Wanderers by Chuck Wendig was really, really good. Um, I also did really enjoy Ninth House by Lady Bardugo a lot. I know I kind of flip-flopped between giving it 4.5 out of 5 stars or 5 stars, um, but I, the more I think about it, the more it is very, very good. It's not as good as 10,000 Doors of January for me, but it is still up there. Um, for So those were books that came out this year that I liked a lot off the top of my head, but I also enjoyed um, The Troop by Nick Cutter, uh, Hyperion by Dan Simmons was really good, um, and Gone South by Robert McCammon. Those books have been around for a while, but I, I read those this year and also thought they were very good. Three, what was your least favorite book in 2009? Ooh. So 2009 was the era of Twilight knockoffs. Um, I definitely read a couple. Um, I was not a fan of Twilight and not trying to get on the Twilight bandwagon hate. I just went into it thinking it was a horror novel and it wasn't. Like I read the entire thing and I'm like, once again, it gets scary because it's got vampires, right? But it wasn't. Um, so just a lot of those like crappy knockoffs, like I think Hush Hush came out and I read it and the cover made it me think, ooh, it's going to be creepy, and it wasn't, so probably one of those Twilight knockoffs, or there was also this book I had to read um, my senior year called Almanac of the Dead by Leslie Marmon Silco, and maybe as an adult I would appreciate it more now, but when I read it back then there was like some really disturbing imagery involving castration, and I, I just didn't get what was going on, and it was this big brick of a book, and I did not like it. I, I missed something, but but that was when I was 17, so I think maybe as a 27-year-old I might... If I revisit it, maybe I'd appreciate it more, because it has good re you know, ratings on, on Goodreads. Oh, I also did... I didn't like Things Fall Apart. Um, I forgot what the, the author's name is, but I also didn't like that book, because it just kind of depressed me. Alright, what was your least favorite book in 2019? So, a couple of my least favorite books just right now if people ask me what books do you hate, Black Iris by Leah Rader. I don't know why so many people love that book, but I loathe it. Anytime I see that book, I get so angry. Um, There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. Um, also, that was just super disappointing. That was a one-star read for me. Um, I'm a big seasoned horror fan, and reading that book, I'm like, this does not do justice to the horror genre at all. 
so 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 disappointing. I didn't read either of those in 2019. I read them last year or the year before that, but still, you know, I had to mention um, books that were just disappointing. Those are it for books that came out this year. Um, Last One's Left Alive by Sarah Davis Goff. Um, it's a post-apocalyptic fiction with zombies, right? But it was the most boring apocalypse ever. I was not... There, there was a lot of potential in that book, but it was just very disappointing. Um, Scream Sight by Justina Ireland was just really bad. Um, she came out with Dread Nation, which was much better, but it almost seemed like there's a, they were to two totally different authors. Um, I also pretty much don't like anything by M Natasha Preston. I know, I'm sorry. Um, she came out with like The Cellar and a bunch of like YA thrillers, but I just... All of her books, I've read a couple now at this point, and they were just all super disappointing for me. Five. What is a book published in 2009 that you still want to read? So, I've been wanting to read The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley for years. It came out in 2009 and it's been on my TBR. The whole series has been on my TBR since then. Um, I keep wanting to, and I even own two of the books. I just, for whatever reason, still am not picking it up. And it sucks because I like mysteries and it seems very cute and fun and cozy. So I definitely need to get to those. Um, Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. Um, my ex had recommended this book to me not that long ago, and I found out that it was published in 2009. Um, at some point I'm going to get to it. It's not super high on my TBR because I have so many other things above there, but that is a book from 2009 that, that I would still want to read. Um, and then Lips Touch Three Times by Lainey Taylor also came out in 2009. Um, I've heard that some of her best work, um, and I do like her writing style a lot. I enjoyed Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but it wasn't like my favorite you know, everyone was super obsessed with it, and I, I liked it, um, but I think that maybe with that story collection, it's supposed to be, like, the best, so I kind of want to check that out. Um, question six. What is a book published in 2019 you want to get to before 2020? Ooh, so, unfortunately, I don't think very many of these I will be getting to, because I already have my TBR pretty set, and most of them were books that weren't published this year, but I would like to ideally get to the Whisper Man by Alex North. Um, I have it on hold at my library, so I don't think I'm going to be getting it before 2020, uh, but it sounds really cool. Um, Winterwood by Shay Ermshaw, I'm actually reading right now, because I usually have like two books going because I'm crazy like that. Um, the Gracier by Kim Liggett, I definitely want to read that. A couple of my friends have been reading it. It's been everywhere and it sounds super, super good. Um, I've heard that there have been some comparisons between Wilder Girls and The Grace Year, and The Grace Year is supposed to be better, and I'm all for it. Um, the Institute by Stephen King. I've been really wanting to get to that. Um, unfortunately, the hold that I put on at the library came in when I was on my trip to Pittsburgh back in October, and it expired the day before we got back. And since then, I put the hold on it again, haven't gotten it. I might ask for it for Christmas or just wait until that hold comes in, um, which will probably be in 2020. Um, I also want to read The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I've read a couple of Ruth Ware books and um, the first couple were sort of disappointing. One was pretty good and then I've heard just nothing but great things about The Turn of the Key, so um, I'm looking forward to getting to that at some point because it seems like there have been a lot of really good thrillers coming out this year. Question 7. What is a genre you used to read a lot of that you don't read as much of anymore? I actually, for the most part, read the same genres. Um, I don't read very many paranormal romances anymore. Um, not that I did a lot, but when I was a teenager, I'd, I was more willing to pick some of them up, and I think it, they, they were more prevalent and more popular back then, um, as opposed to I feel like they phased out a little bit. And so I don't read a whole lot. And I also don't read a lot of, like, why a dystopian? I'll still read post-apocalyptic or apocalyptic or disaster stories, but stuff, you know, I'll reread The Hunger Games because I really enjoy that series, but for the most part, any kind of Hunger Games knockoff. I used to be really into reading anything like The Hunger Games, and I don't gravitate towards that as much anymore. Let's see, question eight. What is a new genre you've discovered since 2009? Well, High fantasy, in a way. Um, I used to think that all high fantasy were just rip-offs of <laughs> Lord of the Rings. I know, I know. But, um, but like, I'd read a couple 
that I didn't really enjoy and it kind of tainted my view of high fantasy because I thought it was just a bunch of white dudes on horseback with swords and just wandering around and you know some magical creatures and, and stuff but like I thought that they all had kind of the same plot because there were several books like I did not enjoy Aragon or you know a couple books like that um so I thought that it's all like that but I've re you know been discovering that it's not the case at all and there's actually a lot of really awesome high fantasy out there um which has been really cool so sort of getting into that and also um I've been a fan of The Stand since middle school, but I didn't read a whole lot of post-apocalyptic fiction in middle school or high school, but in college, I really fell in love with it. I, I read Swan Song for the first time and just was captivated by it, and basically any kind of post-apocalyptic, apocalyptic or disaster fiction, I realized that's like one of my all-time favorite subgenres ever. And so it's still basically my favorite subgenre. Um, and any books like that, I will definitely be picking up. So, so I discovered that since since two thousand nine. Question nine: What is a reading or book habit you are hoping to leave behind in this decade? I want to stop putting books off that I've told people I'm going to read. Um, I think this has happened a few times where, like, a friend or like I know my ex did this, or uh, you know family member or somebody super super excited about a book series or a book and they're like please you know read it and I'll be like yeah I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna read it and then I it's like six months a year year and a half later that I get to it um and I, I don't want to come across as like not caring or something like that um I want to practice being better at following through when I say I'm going to do something um because I think it's gonna be better to show that I you know love and care for that person um or like for friends if they recommend this book it's like this is my favorite book then I want to really bump it up and make it a priority to get to that book um, so that's that's what I want to leave behind is putting things off and instead I want to be able to commit and be like okay if this person is like really excited about this book I'm gonna make it more of a priority all right question 10 what is a new reading goal or habit you want to create in the up coming decade. All right, so I'm going to bump up my Goodreads reading challenge. I've always made it 100, and for the most part I hit it, um, but I'm going to make it a minimum of 125 this coming year because I am phasing out social media in my life. Um, I'm going to keep Goodreads, I'm going to keep YouTube, of course, and I'm going to keep Facebook. Everything else, though, I'm deleting and just being done with. Um, and the only reason why I'm going to be keeping Facebook is because I'm connected to family and friends and that's the only way to communicate with them. And I'm a part of a couple of um, Facebook like support groups that I can't just up and leave. So keeping that. But I feel like I waste so much time on a lot of different sites not really doing much. And if I cut that out, that would be, you know, multiple hours of reading time or writing time or reviewing time or putting into these videos or um, all kinds of stuff. So I'm, I'm doing that. So I'm going to be more focused on getting more books to read, um, being more active in the YouTube booktube community, um, and you know, continue to work on my writing and really not wasting time. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'm looking forward to 2020 and all of the books that are coming out. There's quite a few awesome ones coming out and I still need to catch up on some from 2019. This year I think actually seemed to be a really good book year. There were a lot of books that I read that I really enjoyed. Um, definitely some duds, but for the most part I feel like I did rate a lot of books very positively um, and it was very exciting to see all the thrillers and the fantasies and the horror and just yeah it was it was a great year for books I think. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I tag anybody who is watching this um, you know, link it to me below or just let me know that you've done it and then I'll go check out your channel. Um, you know, thank you so much. You guys have an awesome day. Happy reading and I will talk to you later.